हेलो इन दिस सेशन वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द क्वालिटी ऑफ द इरिगेशन वाटर बिकॉज द क्वालिटी ऑफ इरिगेशन मैटर्स अ लॉट बिकॉज इट मे हैव अ पॉजिटिव और निगेटिव इम्पैक्ट ऑन इरिगेशन ऑन सॉइल सो वॉट एवर द सॉइल वी आर यूजिंग फॉर ग्रोइंग एनी कर्टी एनी पर्टिकुलर क्रॉप Uh, so uh, on that soil there may be the positive effect so how it affects basically so uh, because in in case of negative effect so if uh, if the sodium percentage or the salt percentage is more then it will affect on the permeability of the soil and then if permeability of the soil is less or if uh, then there is a less aeration and then uh, there is a negative effect on the crop growth so that's why quality of the irrigation water is most important thing and whatever the nutrients are there in the irrigation water uh, that are basically uh, important for the crop growth so we will discuss in detail about the quality of the irrigation water in uh, today's session uh, so the first point is about the uh, functions of the irrigation water so there are the different functions uh, so we will discuss what are those different fu functions of the irrigation water so solvent for nutrients uh, basically this irrigation water acts as a solvent for the nutrients so water uh, forms the solution of the nutrients and this solution is absorbed by the roots so water acts as a nutrient carrier in this case second is uh, supplies moisture so uh, irrigation water supplies moisture which is essential for the chemical action within the plant which leads into the crop growth or a plant growth uh, next is produce nourishing food products uh, so some salts present in the soil reacts to the produce reacts uh, reacts and produce nourishing food products so in the presence of water only if there is no uh, if uh, there is no water then it will not be able to produce the nourishing food products which are useful for the plants next is it cools the soil and atmosphere basically this water cools the soil and the atmosphere and uh, that's why it makes more favorable environment for the healthy plant growth next is washes out or dilute the salt so basically uh, irrigation water with controlled supplies if there is a control supply in that case only it washes out or dilute salts in the soil so whatever the salts are there which gets dissolved so that uh, it can either dilute or it can wash out the salts uh, why it is necessary that we will discuss again in detail uh, so uh, and the last one reduces the hazard of soil piping so basically uh, soil piping will not get form uh, and uh, so that so these are the different functions of the irrigation water so uh, how it reduces the hazard of the soil piping so basically because of the irrigation water there won't be the large soil piping and uh, you must have observed many times when the soil dries and then it uh, makes a piping in the soil so that's why this water is most important thing so these are the functions of the irrigation water we have not started yet quality okay so we will discuss about the quality but definitely when we have to discuss about the quality we have to consider what are the impurities present in the irrigation water so quality of the irrigation water depends mainly on various types of the impurities present in the water so the first one is the concentration of sediments in the water so actually this concentration of sediments in the uh, water or the total concentration of soluble salt that is tds basically uh, it reduces the permeability of the soil so if it is in a large amount then it reduces the permeability of the soil uh, then proportion of sodium ions to the other cations actually in the esp that is exchangeable sodium percentage we will have the more clear idea actually uh, because this sodium percentage depending upon there are the different classes like uh, uh, based on the esp and star values sodium absorption ratio so depending upon that we have made a different classification that we will discuss in detail that time i will explain you concentration of toxic elements okay so there are the toxic elements such as boron so if the presence of toxic ele uh, element like boron is more than 2 milligram um, more than 2 ppm 
so in that case actually that particular water is not suitable for the irrigation uh, bacterial concentration basically this bacterial concentration will not affect or will not harmful directly to the plant but if uh, that is that plant is consumed by human or the animals then there would be the harmful or the um, uh, injurious to the, or uh, it is risky to the health of the animals or the humans so that was uh, all about the impurities or the quality of the irrigation water so you must have got the little bit idea about what are the impurities and what is the function of the irrigation water we will uh, discuss the classification of the irrigation water so there are the main three types so classification based on total concentration of soluble salts based on sodium concentration and based on electrical conductivity total dissolved solid exchangeable sodium percentage that is esp and b that is boron i uh, will start with classification based on total concentration of soluble salts so basically uh, the uh, when the irrigation water is there so irrigation water contains salt so that we can express like ppm which is parts per million or a milligram per liter so basically it is same ppm or milligram per liter so, uh, then milli equivalent per liter and electrical conductivity that we can express as a micromoles per centimeter uh, we can uh, b basically when there is excess of sodium even calcium magnesium or potassium it reduces the permeability and that's why uh, we should find out the salinity of the soil solution so there is a formula given for the salinity of soil solution is equal to uh, c that is concentration of salt in irrigation water into q that is total quantity of water supplied to the soil divided by q that is again total quantity of water supplied to the applied to the soil minus uh, so in bracket it is consumptive use c is the consumptive use of water so consumptive use is nothing but the uh, combination of evaporation and uh, transpiration so how much amount of water is evaporated and transpired uh, from the plant so that is nothing but the consumptive use minus p effective so that is nothing but the useful rainfall or effective rainfall so on the basis of which we can find out the uh, salinity of soil solution actually based on the salt concentration uh, that united state department uh, has uh, made the classification so basically this uh, usda classification is there and you can see the different columns where there are the four types c1 c2 c3 c4 depending upon the range of the electrical conductivity uh, it varies from 100 up to the more than 2250 so uh, if the range is between 100 to 250 then it is low salinity then medium high and very high very high so on the basis of that uh, actually uh, we can have the idea about whether it, whether it is suitable or whether it is unsuitable in the second class if it is medium uh, definitely uh, there are the some crops which can ha which can tolerate tolerate such a percentage so for that crop only we can apply the water otherwise it is unsuitable the next is classification based on sodium concentration so uh, there is a formula given to find out the esp and if esp is more than 85 percent then soil becomes unpermeable uh, it, it becomes impermeable uh, and also it becomes sticky and it forms uh, clods when it uh, dries then it crusts so basically that's why actually esp uh, should not be more than 85 percent so this is a threshold value and uh, in the same way the classification is done for in case of esp as well there are the four classes based on the range of esp the so esp values whether it is suitable not suitable but in the second class it is suitable for core structured soil only if it is less than 10 then it is suitable for all crops and all type of the soil and uh, if it is high then up to the 26 then it may harmful but if we do the leaching and gypsum addition then we can use for the crop if it is too high more than 26 we cannot use for the irrigation purpose then the last type is classification based on electrical conductivity total dissolved solids exchangeable sodium percentage and boron so actually we already have done this esp so we know the formula for the esp also so same formula we can use and can find out 
and uh, in the same column we have divided the classes 1 2 and 3 so the first class is there in which electrical conductivity should be less than 1000 tds should be less than 700 ppm esp should be less than 60 percent boron should be less than 0.5 so in this way we have done the classification for the first second and third if the boron percentage is more than 2 then that particular type of the soil is uh, that particular type of the irrigation water is not suitable for any crop so it should range in between 0 to 0 0.5 only so that's why the classification is done here class 1 water is the first class which is excellent to good for most crops second is harmful for most sensitive crops uh, whereas we can apply uh, for sugar cane such a water but if there are the most sensitive crops in which case in that case we cannot apply such a water and the last type is uh, class 3 water which is basically unsuitable so this one so in this way there are the different types or the different classes of the irrigation water so this is the example which uh, is given for to solve actually in example it is mentioned that an irrigation water has the following characteristics so what are those characteristics sodium calcium magnesium the um, uh, content is given how what is that uh, percentage and what is the electrical conductivity is given also then we are supposed to classify the irrigation water so we already have discussed uh, different classes so we can classify the irrigation water and then explain the problems that may rise due to such water in fine textured soil and one, what would be the solution for this so this is what we are supposed to mention uh, so uh, how can we solve it so for that purpose basically if we classify the irrigation water how can we classify irrigation water I am just giving you the hint you are supposed to solve this particular equation uh, solve this particular problem and if you face any kind of difficulty you can mention in the comment box uh, about your difficulty but I will just give you the hint how you can solve this particular problem so the hint is first you should find out the SAR value okay SAR sodium absorption ratio so formula for sodium absorption ratio is given so this is the formula you all you have the values for sodium calcium magnesium find out the SAR value so whatever the value you get based on that value here there is a classification given for the SAR so whether it is low medium uh, low sodium water medium high and very high so you can have a code whether it is it comes under s1 s2 s3 s4 in the same way you can find out uh, another classification based on the electrical conductivity which is already given to you it is 180 so under which class it comes okay so we have seen the classes so for electrical conductivity also there are the uh, classes okay so whether it is comes under c1 c2 c3 c4 and then you may get a class s1 c1 or s1 c2 or s2 c2 like that so you mention that class so that is all about the classification second point is that explain the problems that may arise due to such a water in the fine so uh, actually then you you are supposed to explain that how it will affects on the permeability and uh, how what is the effect of the uh, how it will affect on ph and all these things and what can be the solution if uh, this is the problem then what would be the solution so what you should add or what you should do what kind of measures or the precautions uh, you should do so by which you can reduce the uh, problem so first you should identify the problem and then you can give the solution on that particular problem so if you face any difficulty you can put in the comment box so that for the next video I will solve and I will explain how can we solve this particular problem so this is all about uh, today's session uh, thank you.